Howdy. Uh, there's a hurricane situation in America. I've been following it for some, to some degree. We are at National Data Buoy Center. There are many other pages where you can follow the same. That's what they think the track it will take. We will be wiser afterwards because it seems to turn more and more to the east and after uh, watching some news about this and the track it may take i just remembered one particular video which i found very interesting from bruce Layburn, and i just thought i wanted to share it with you you can take out of it what you want to I just want to provide you with some information about things. It is a very interesting setup that we have here in the Gulf of Mexico. But let's give Bruce Leyburn a word. Look at the global lightning. This is a... Um what they call annual flash rate. Uh, this is from NASA satellite data. You're looking at uh, about eight years worth of what they call composite, annualized composite data. So you see a huge concentration in the Congo. So you see your, your intensity here. This is the most lightning at the top, the dark. You also see, here's your Katamba that we just talked about, right at the, um, in Venezuela. Tampa Bay Lightning in Gulf of Mexico. Have a little spot up here in the near the Himalayas. Uruguay, Argentina, relationship to lightning down here. But I wanted to sh I just showed you the relationship to the Katamba Lightning. I wanted to talk a little bit more about what's going on up here in Tampa Bay. After I talk about the relationship to the mantle gravity. This is uh, from Grace satellite data and they show the mantle gravity anomalies by mathematically stripping away the crust or the lithosphere and you're seeing this feature here is your east pacific rise circuit you're seeing the inner fingering you see a tip of a chest adhesion right here but as you come here is kind of inner fingers into the continent is where the lightning seems to be connected to these circuits in the mantle. You also have a connection here through the Cayman Trough and up through the Bahamas back to Tampa Bay. And then in the Congo, the Southeast Indian Ridge, if you follow it, past this feature, triple junction, come around to this feature, another tip of a chestahedron. And then the African Rift, this is where the lightning is right next to this feature. So another connection to this ridge. And here is, you see this is a little better. Uh, this is your inline versus your collapsed. Repeating geometry. Let's see if I got. So to me, this is the most pronounced feature of uh, this triple junction here. Y circuit sticking straight up through the, uh, this is the ocean, of course. There's um, it's a Red Sea Rift, right? And you see these features are quite common. There's one in the Indian Ocean, the Rodriguez Triple Junction. One here at Galapagos up here, closer to the U.S. offshore. So these features are fairly common. Now let's get so a little bit, let's analyze what was going on with the lightning up in Tampa Bay. I have some interesting ideas about that. This is John Quinn's magnetic model data. Here he's, um, models basalt flow remnants. Here's your colors. Um, the red and yellow are shallower, 30 to 70 kilometers, while your deep green and 
blues, there's your range, 70 to 400 kilometers. There's your double layer, deep double layer with the upper, upper mantle, um, positive layer. So I zoom in to Florida to look at the relationships of these tool antenna, we'll call them that today, on either side of Florida, and surface magnetic data from USGS, the crustal signatures, even shallower than these features. You see an ancient Triassic rift that runs through Florida. This was what they consider responsible for opening of the Gulf of the Mexico back in the Triassic. They're associated with iron, red beds, and such like that. If you, from drill data, they, they know what's down there. But you see this feature runs right across through Tampa Bay, and it's kind of connected to the Bahamas. But this is uh, shallow. So lightning would ground to these anomalies in here, and it's like a bridge that connects these two deeper features, which have connections to the core. So there's your your grounding connections, and you can see them with the magnetic data. And what got me curious about this was um, the 2004 hurricane season. You had three hurricanes that intersected just east of Tampa Bay. And I was curious about that. That was intriguing. Um, Charlie came in from the Gulf side, and Jeannie and Francis both came in through near Abaco, Bahamas, and came up through, caught the edge of the Gulf. So I said, what could possibly be going on with the intersection of three hurricanes here? I'm kind of curious about that. So I, I talked to Visola. They run the U.S. Lightning Detection Network. I think they're located out in Tucson. But they were kind enough to share this histogram of lightning strike data for these years, uh, 96 through 2004. And what you see is uh, about a half million strikes, and it's about a two degree area that's around Tampa. I'll show you the plots in a minute to orient you, but you get a little bit more, um, on average, a little bit over half a million strikes up until this year, 2003 the year right before you had the three hurricanes strike in the area. And I was looking at this chart here. This is a, a century's worth of data, 1900 to 2000. John Quinn used five-year running averages or models to create this curve, your Earth's magnetic moment decay. So your magnetic field is increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. We're associating this with a discharging and a charging effect. And I have this down here, which is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. This is considered the largest global temperature proxy on the planet. It's a horseshoe's temperature pattern that goes from a U-shape in the northern Pacific to an L-shaped uh, over here by Caruso and the intertropical convergence. And then you get the U along uh, California when it's positive and it goes back to the L shape when it's a cooler or a cooling trend. And it's interesting that the inflection points turn with the magnetic decay. But what's even more curious is here when it goes from discharging to charging is when your lightning doubles. Now, Tampa Bay has more lightning than anywhere in the North America. So for it to double in one year in a place that already has more lightning than anywhere in North America is pretty interesting. What causes that? So we think the reason is right here because the Earth's discharging and goes back to a charging effect. The reasons behind all this, I don't have time to go into that today, but there, there's just some suspected reasons. This is the blue, what we're looking at here is the positive strokes versus all the strokes, the green being negative, uh, cloud to ground, negative polarity. Um, what Weitzel says about the positive strokes 
is that the charges lowers from the cloud before you get the, the strike. Whether well, it's actually coming from the ground, I, had, I couldn't get them to admit that it was coming from the ground, and I don't know, but they consider it charge lowers from the cloud, so you get a, a traction from the ground before you get the strike. That's what is represented by the blue. And they gave me two separate plots. They plotted the total and the positive. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is the chart of all the data, and you see a concentration just at the mouth of Tampa Bay. This is where the hurricane's intersection was, right in the middle of this circle. But when you plot the positive strokes over here, here's, here's what they say about the convention of lightning polarity, charge being lowered from the cloud. You see a shift inland along the peninsular arch of Florida and you get two distinct uh, concentrations of lightning. So if you take these two charts and you add them together, and plot it all together, the reason you don't see, you wouldn't see this unless you only plotted the positive, but consider a delta circuit between the two positive concentrations and the negative or the lightning, uh, the cloud to ground lightning here. So you have a negative and two positive poles in your triangle. So another delta circuit in the lightning configuration. Yes, I made it easier for me. I didn't have to talk too much. Hopefully you get something out of it. I recommend you to watch the whole video. Very interesting. And uh, yeah, let's see. Where does it go? What does it do? Anyway, thanks. Bye.